Welcome to the Business Influencer Show by Tell Radio. We hope everyone's having a great week. We have just only started here at Business Influence Radio, but we're getting rave reviews, and it's all to you, all you business influencers out there that are checking in. We welcome you if you're new to us. And again, we encourage you to follow us here on Spotify as well as YouTube and also at the Tell Radio uh, website. Again, uh, we're going to have a great show today. Our show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. They are a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing together alumni from all types of generation levels, from baby boomers to Gen Z to Gen X, the millennial, you name it. And it takes all the noise out of social media. So it creates an authentic, genuine place to really build genuine relationships, share ideas, share different things of, uh, from your past, what's going on currently, and perhaps you may land your next job opportunity or business partner opportunity. This is a great place. Check them out at alumnidirect.com. That's alumnidirect.com. Today, we're going to be talking about personal branding for executives. Now, you heard it, personal branding, not branding, but personal branding for executives. And we're going to have a, a great show today with you. And our guest today is Dorothea, and that is, uh, um, in this case, we're going to be uh, yeah, Dorothea Bozi Colonna Volpe. So I, it was a mouthful. If I, my wife were here, it would roll right off the tip of her tongue. So uh, Dorothea is a, you know, a friend of mine. We've gotten to know each other now over, for, over the last few months, and she is doing some wonderful things. Let me give you a little background about her. She was, uh, she's a strategic digital marketing executive who is fluent in four languages. That's correct, four languages. And specializes in developing business through digital influencer and social media marketing for the most, world's most memorable brand. She teaches marketers and business leaders how to increase their value and develop a strong relationship between brands and fans. Now there's four distinct areas in her business that she covers from e-commerce to employer and personal branding to enterprise social networking and marketing strategy. So again, she has appeared on social media subject matter from CBS to CNN. She is an avid skateboarder who tweets to relax and you could follow her. She's gonna mention her contact information here later where you can follow her on Twitter and Instagram at social uh, espionage. And her clients range from Coca-Cola to Ryan Seacrest to IBM, USA Today, the list goes on and on. I mean, I can re sit here for three minutes just citing the companies that she works with. And without further ado, we welcome Dorothea to the show. Dorothea, how are you doing today? I am well, Christopher. Thank you so much for having me. I feel honored because knowing what you, uh, the folks that you've been interviewing on Business Influences, I have to say I'm, I'm complimented and humbled. Um, I will say it was very cool of you to attempt my name because I know it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, growing up with a name like Dorothea Bozi Colonna Volpe meant for sure I would become a tomboy and a bit scrappy because <laughs> I got my bum kicked a lot. Um, but the name of my company at Social Espionage is even more unique because I believe you've, you've watched, I hope, my TED talk. We talked about this when we first yes. met. And I come out of the area of law enforcement strategy and landed in marketing strategy uh, because of a life event. Okay, we'll talk about that because I really want to talk because really when you think about personal branding, a lot of times this evolves from our personal stories a lot of exactly. times. Exactly. So, so yeah. if you could talk about it because obviously you uh, are, a, you know, you are a testament to your own experience and how you've carried that in your, your marketing career and branding, personal branding career that you've done for companies and executives. Yeah. Um, if I, I'll, I'll try to define it without getting too emotional. How does that sound? That sounds so, great. So um, I had a life event in that I was with somebody for many years. And uh, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. And I was still in my law enforcement career at the time. Um, came uh, really close to losing him that first time. And then the second time, it was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I had already, you know, in my life's journey, been very influenced by entrepreneurs. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. I, I think I shared with you, he was in the wine business and the Volpe's had been in the wine business for almost 600 years. Uh, my late George was an entrepreneur. 
He came from a long line of entrepreneurs himself. So I, I had a lot of influences. And that life event of losing George to cancer really brought a lot out, out in me in that I wanted to know that I had the personal medal to try something new. And I was able to get a taste of that during his illness. A few companies hired me. And there's a saying in French, I, I, I'll say it in English because I don't think your, your uh, listeners would appreciate it in French. Um, it says, what a woman wants, God will provide. And during George's illness, I had the happenstance of having a moonlighting gig. That's what we called it back in the 90s. Today, you call that a side hustle, right? <laughs> yes. And it really helped fund things for George's illness, like um, acupuncture and hiring a nutritionist and uh, you know, massage therapy for when you're going through cancer, which can be very debilitating to your body, obviously. Um, these little things can really matter. And that's sort of what gave me the, the impetus, if you will, was the catalyst for me thinking, hey, maybe I could do this on my own. I'd been working as an analyst and working in, you know, the world of law enforcement tech for quite some time, um, moved up the ranks in the company, and I was very happy with my job, but not completely fulfilled. And I tell people that when George died, you know, I didn't really have an emotional safety net here. I had no family here. Uh, most of the friendships I had were through my work and they, they were globally people from all over the world, you know, criminal, criminologists that were in Bath, England or, or working out of MIT or working for the Mossad in Israel. So my network was rather global. And because I didn't have anyone here, you know, it felt as though doors, windows were closing, right? So I realized what I had to do, Christopher, is that um, I had to create my own doors. I had to find some other new thing to walk through. And starting my own business is what that new door was. And I tell people this all the time, even though my career is somewhat happenstance, my personal brand really built out of social equity. You see, when George was ill, and I mentioned this in my TED talk, I began to reach out to my network and ask for advice. I mean, I figure I work with all these PhDs, surely they know a couple of other PhDs, whether they're in their industry or not. And before I knew it, you know, one person might introduce me to eight people. Oh, I know this person who was working for MD Anderson. Uh, he was a PhD that went, I went through a different program with when I was studying this type of science and da, 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 da. And before I knew it, you know, I had this whole network, a whole Rolodex. This is way before LinkedIn, right? This is 1995, you know, a full eight years before LinkedIn even came out in 2003. And I was really using social network and my own you know, what we call social equity to build my personal brand amongst this global community just to ask for help. And I realized, well, gosh, if I can do it, and I'm doing it obviously for a life and death reason, right? I'm sure I could help other people to do exactly what I have done. Um, did I adequately answer that question properly? You absolutely <laughs> did. Absolutely. And that, you know, it's a powerful story. I mean, we all have, you know, certain things that have happened to us sometimes when things are not going good in our lives or we've lost somebody that was close to us. You know, a lot of times these things, there's always a silver lining, you know, that what, what it can teach us and certain things that we can appreciate that we can bring and help others, you know, whether if it's personal or in this case in uh, business with, with personal branding. Can you talk about, uh, Dorothea, the, the difference between personal branding and branding? I think if, if you know, the audience here as influencers would like to get a, you know, a better understanding of what those differences are. So brands are distinctive, you know, um, they're consistent, you know, um, and when I say they're distinctive, meaning there's something about them that makes them, you know, stand out to the people who have a relationship with them. Um, they're relevant, right? What they stand for connects to what someone else considers to be important. And they're consistent. Let's get back to that. People yeah. come to believe in a relationship based on the consistency of behaviors they experience or observe with a, a product, a service, a solution. Personal branding is the perception or emotion maintained by somebody other than you that describes the entire experience of having a relationship with you. So personal branding is really what the outside world perceives in our behaviors, both on and offline, right? You know, somebody might be really great, you know, at a conference and then you get to know them personally and think, oh my word, that they, that's, then maybe they were kind of rude to the person that was working and, you know, setting up their mic or the lighting people or what have you, like, ooh, you know, you may not want to get to know that person. And I always say this when I give speeches, you know, 
I, I say personal branding is, you know, um, really everybody's perception of you other than your mother, right? Because, you know, that's the one person that's going to love you no matter what, you know, whether you're an axe murderer or a CEO, probably poor, bad analogy. Um, but nevertheless, I think that what really makes you stand apart from a brand is that you're human and you're constantly evolving. And this is the first time in the history of work where who you are professionally and who you are personally actually integrates. Yeah. Uh, something I always find so, uh, kind of funny, and you probably do this too. You get this a time or two, you know, you, you reach out to somebody on Facebook and they say, oh, 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 you know, I, I only connect with people here that I, I know personally. Well, gosh, I've been doing business with you for 10 years. You don't know me personally, right? Yeah. You know, I, LinkedIn is for my perfect, no. I'll tell you something, in 2021, right? We are our brand. I don't care if you're the postman or if you are the CEO of Xerox, right? Um, you are your brand and you are that brand on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, you know, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, uh, you name it, right? So I think it's really important that people learn to embrace that and open themselves up to that experience. Well, what I love what you just said, and it's so true, I, I've always been a big advocate for the last 20 years about core values, the values that truly define a person, you know, what dictates their behavior, their communication, their interaction with people, with the audience they serve, the business that they're in. And I know for me that, you know, those values are transparency, honesty, and integrity. They show up in my personal life and in my business. And like you said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that personal brand each and every day, whether if I'm on, like, you know, if I'm in a, like on a, my, here being the host of business influencers, if I'm out speaking, but yet, even when I'm with my wife, my son, with the neighbors at a, a high school football game where my son plays and all that, you are that brand. So, you know, talk about some of the things that you, when you, you, when you work with a person, like in this case, you've worked with Ryan Seacrest, you know, with, you know, saw the involvement of his career and then other executives that you worked with. Talk about that importance of this, that a brand is constantly, you know, it's 24 seven, it's evolving and how important that is to, to their connection to their, you know, the products or services that they represent. So it really goes back to values, right? And mores. Um, what does that person stand for? You know, what do they, you know, what makes them distinctive, right? What makes them consistent in their messaging? What makes them relevant? getting down to those core three things and understanding how that meshes with their values. I'll give you an example. Um, you're probably familiar with the rapper Lil' Kim. She came up with Biggie, yes. right? Um, she's changed and morphed a lot over the years. She probably wouldn't be on a Goldman Sachs commercial anytime soon because it doesn't really, and this is no, no uh, slight to her. She's a very talented woman, yeah. but people don't, you know, look at her as giving their money management advice. Whereas, you know, somebody like Jamie Diamond comes out and he's talking about money and finance and he's interviewed in The Economist. I don't see him going out and creating, you know, Jay-Z's The Black Album, right? It just doesn't, you know, correlate. It's about values. Um, and there has been missteps. I, I've seen it come, happen with some of my clients, you know, where we, I worked with a celebrity and they thought it would be really great for this one celebrity to to be present at the Super Bowl and, and, and there at kickoff time. And people didn't view this celebrity as being a sport person. And this celebrity, I'm not gonna say who got booed, mm. right? Because people, again, come to know you as a certain way and they think of it that way. And when you're looking to align yourself with a brand as let's say a, an influencer, right? It has to fit your core values. And that also goes the other way. Brands are going to look for people to act as influencers for their product, their service, their solution, to people who are passionate about it, right? I think we started to move away from looking at pretty people because people started getting smart and saying, I want authenticity. Yeah. I want vulnerability. I want to know that when that person is drinking that specific type of beer, that they look like me, you know, or wine exactly. or mineral water, what have you. Um, so that being said, I think the brands that really win 
are the brands that understand that it's about passion and it's about authenticity. I love to use the example of Nike. So uh, Nike, you know, big trainer brand, big sports shoes, ten, uh, uh, you know, trainers and sneaker brand. And they, you know, they sell some pretty expensive sneakers, right? They learned long ago that people in our age group, and I'm going to clock you in with me, you know, people in their late forties and, and up, yes. we're not going to spend four or $500 on a pair of shoes unless, you know, <laughs> we collect them or something, right? We have mortgages, you have, you know, university and so did I educations to pay for, for children and, and that kind of thing. And, and really what winds up happening is they think, wow, you know, we want to become an aspirational brand. We've got to become a brand that stands for something. We want to tug at people's heartstrings. So what did they do? They hired on Colin Kaepernick, who took a stand yeah. and took a knee. And they put him up in Times Square and all of their advertisements. And they said to the youth of the world, look, we're willing to put our, you know, stake in the ground and say that we want you to aspire to wearing our four to five hundred to six hundred dollar pair of trainers. So, you know, Nike knew how to tug at people's emotions and their heartstrings, and they wound up, you know, moving away from, we don't want moms and dads to wear our shoes. We want young people who are aspiring to be hip hop artists or, you know, you know, NFL or collegiate athletes to be wearing our brands. I mean, can I ask you a question? When was the last time you spent $500 on any pair of piece of clothing? Oh, God. I, don't, I can't even, I don't even... Maybe a suit, either. maybe a suit or and higher, but but definitely not a pair like a shirt or a yeah. pair of pants or just no. by far never for sneakers. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So so I, I like to use them as an example because I think that they've done, wouldn't you say, a good job of yeah. of really understanding their market and uh, their niche and focusing on that, and they've done quite well. Yeah, no, so true, so true. It, so talk a little bit about like if, you know, like somebody that, that, you know, an executive, whether if they run their own business, they're, or they're a high level executive in a corporation could be, you know, could be even a, you know, an up and coming sports figure, whatever the case may be. Talk about like, what would you recommend with, you know, if somebody were looking to map out a personal brand for themselves and they're starting from scratch, so to speak, what would be some of the things that you could provide the audience some you know, some tips on, on how they would go about doing that. So number one is what we were told when we were little kids. You know, you've got two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. Use them accordingly. I think it's really important to be a voracious reader and a voracious listener. Research the heck out of whatever you want to be an expert in, right? And even if you've been in that industry for 10 years, chances are you're still learning and you're looking to other thought leaders. You know, I have friends who uh, are data scientists yet they still read books by David Ogilvy, Peter Drucker, and Malcolm Gladwell, you know, on the regular, and Gartner Research and what have you, because they want to know as much as they can know about that product, that service, that solution in their industry, so they can do their jobs well. I also think that it's great to, you know, they call it in social media, jumping the shock. It's when you quote somebody, who is considered revered in your industry. So I quote, I jump the shock sometimes because I love to quote Peter Drucker, you know, who once said, you know, um, the right message to the right person at the right time. I always add something to that, which is the right modality. Are they on a laptop? Are they on their mobile phone? Are they on social media? You know, being able to message somebody in that way. So listening, understanding your industry by taking the time to really do your research, and then number three would be know thine customer. Spend as much time as you can with your tribe. What are they struggling with? I hate that phrase, what keeps you up at night? Because that's so boring. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's, it, it, to me, it's like, you know, get to know them and find out what commonalities you have. Are they struggling with the same issue? I find this a lot with leaders, as do you, because you do a lot of leadership yeah. coaching. You know, I, when I'm working with somebody and they have a leadership coach and they've got a life coach and they just don't understand the personal branding bit and where does that all fit? You know, we're so different in what we do and how we add value. And if you can slow down long enough and just sit and listen to your customer and spend the time and also listen to your colleagues, your industry colleagues, it's okay to read your competitors' blogs. 
and, and maybe even take a snippet of it and compliment them. Hey, you know, I learned something new about quantum physics or IoT by reading what you're telling me, you know? It's really, really important that you spend the time doing your research and really know your customer. And I always go back to, you know, socio-technographically, who are they? Where are they on and offline? Where are they spending their time? Um, I once found an employee by taking out, I mean, we're talking employee that's been with me now since 2009, because I took out a $50 ad when I found out that the local libraries were, um, they were laying people off. So scratch a librarian, find a great research assistant, hey? So that being said, I, I just did that by listening. I listened to somebody talk about being laid off and they were a librarian and she was the president of the Librarians Association. Believe it or not, they have those kind of things. And I said, well, do you have a newsletter? Because I knew librarians like to read email newsletters and especially about their industry. Took out an ad and I've, had, I've got a, you know, an employee that's been with me now for uh, almost two decades. So it's just, I find it fascinating that people don't listen more. Mm. And then finally, it's really important that you own your name, you know? And, and when you're writing, like you, are, you have your name, Christopher Salem's, you know, Business Influence Podcast, your name's on it, right? It's your seal of approval. Own your name across everything. If you're writing a blog or creating content, creating content's really key in building your personal brand. You know, that's, but notice how I have that down as like fourth or fifth on the list, yeah. right? The real important thing is to understand where your tribe is and who you're trying to service, what value you're trying to bring. You know, I love a, a quote that an artist made and I want to try to give this person credit. It's going to take me a minute because I have a terrible memory. This is also what happens when you're a cancer survivor. Um, asking questions is what creates creativity. Mm. Asking questions is where businesses start. You know, the old, the old, the old saying, um, Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. Right. You know, think about the guys at Airbnb. They thought, gosh, you know, um, it'd be great to stay at that fancy hotel, but I'm an entrepreneur. I can't afford $500 a night to be with the in crowd. Surely somebody's got a flat somewhere that I can rent, you know, a room in, or maybe the whole flat for, you know, a, a fifth of that price. You know, they, they realize that not everybody can afford, and not that there's anything wrong with hotels, they're great, you know, it's just that not everybody's at that level. Right. That's how couch surfing began. Did I get off on a tangent? I'm sorry. But no, you didn't. No, but it, it's so true what you're saying. It all, it all is relevant. You know, I, questions are so important. I mean, that's the one thing I learned in my sales career prior to getting into coaching and training and, you know, of course, speaking, you know, asking questions. Like you said, we have two ears and one mouth and and too many people use that one mouth, not the two ears. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it also goes back to, to taking the time to really, um, really engage with your audiences and listening to what are the things they want to know. And I think it's uh, I think it's a great idea to survey people and then maybe publish the results. Let them know, hey, I'm going to survey you. I'm going to send you eight to ten questions. And I want to know, you know, where you think you lie in this, you know, sort of sphere and it's going to be anonymous but i'm going to um i'm going to do my best you know to publish the results because i'm asking not just you christopher but maybe 49 other of your peers wouldn't you want to know how many ceo entrepreneurs who have a podcast who are in leadership coaching what they thought about a specific topic of course you would right and then publishing those results in a blog or you know as a as a white paper or maybe it's a cool video blog, like a vlog or something that they talk about the results and what they learned. I think there's so much fun in learning, you know, and asking questions. And maybe it's just me because I'm an intellectually curious person. But. Well, I think it's so, so important because you learn so much about your audience. And then, uh, you know, and then as, as you're able to connect with them on shared values, you know, it just elevates your personal brand even more. You know, you're more compelling to to that audience because like I, i've learned that you know hey you can't be everything for everyone but you're always going to be something for someone in this case more than one person and if you can really show up with your personal brand and be compelling to that that specific audience you know that's just going to further you know can build that connection over time indeed, so, indeed. yeah i agree well, this is great, uh, Dorothea. I mean, if you, I'd like to find out, I'd like to share with the audience, if you could share a little bit about 
social espionage, you know, some of the things that you've, you know, you've done, what you're doing right now in this area of personal branding for executives. We have about, you know, just about less than four minutes to the close of the show, but just wanted to give you that opportunity to share a little bit about that. And then also a little bit about where, you know, people can find you and get to know you and all the great things that you're doing uh, for executives and entrepreneurs and visionaries. So uh, at present, I'm doing a lot of employer branding work. I don't know if you've been following the news, but last week they announced on almost every you know, media outlet that we're now in a position where the United States has 10 million open jobs and we have several organizations, several unions that are striking. Um, John Deere is one that's in the middle of theirs, the IATSE, just uh, in literally midnight on Friday, 9 p.m. On the, on, in LA, in Hollywood, uh, came to an interim agreement. I'm also doing a lot of uh, talks on um, and giving a lot of workshops and keynotes on personal branding. I think I mentioned to you, I've got a new client that I'm going to be visiting this Thursday. I'm doing uh, their internal sales team and personal branding there. Uh, they're in the hospitality industry. So I'm so excited about that. Um, and to get in contact with me, the, the best way, and it's so easy, I'm at Social Espionage, and that's S-O-C-I-A-L-E-S-P-I-O-N-A-G-E on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, um, and on Facebook and, and LinkedIn, I'm Dorotea Bozzi Colonna Volpe. And you can't, I mean, my goodness, you, you can't not find that name anywhere. There's only one of me. That is and exactly. You, and you're welcome to Google me and my TED Talk. Uh, all you've got to do is Google my name and the TED Talk, and you can watch what Christopher had the opportunity to watch before we connected officially. And I wanted to say to your audience, I'm so grateful to have all of you here listening. And I hope you continue to listen to Christopher's show because he's brilliant. And I'm so honored to be spending this time with you this afternoon. So thank you for being so gracious with your time, Christopher, and to your listeners as well. Dorothea, thank you so much for being here, taking time out of your busy schedule. We got about just a few minutes left. To, less to do. Any final comments, if you have like in 30, 45 seconds, you'd like to just close out our show and leave something to the audience that's listening will be listening later. Well, I think this is going to go out to women, uh, if I may, because I am one. <laughs> we make up 52% of the workforce. And I read something that really, gosh, it just, it tugged at my heartstrings when I, I read it immediately. And I was just not expecting it out from this little sprite of a woman. Um, but it was Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State, who said, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. Mm. And mm. I think that's a great, something to think about as we end your show today. Absolutely, absolutely. And we love that we have a lot of women that do listen to our show and there are a lot of more, more women executives and entrepreneurs than ever before. So uh, they are, and they're continue to rise and we fully support women executives and entrepreneurs here at Business Influencers. So. Dorothea, I can't thank you enough again for being here and taking the time to, again to be here with us. We highly encourage everybody that you know is listening to the show to listen it again. There is a lot of great information here. We encourage you to reach out to her and find out more about personal branding, some of the things that her agency does and her team that can help you take your personal brand and branding up to the next level, including your company. And uh, we want to thank everyone that's been part of Business Influencers since the beginning. We promise you we will continue to bring in guests like Dorothea to the show that will, will share their experience and words of wisdom to help elevate your branding and your personal branding and your company and everything involved in business to the next level as an influencer. Till then, have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you at the, on the next episode.